Some of the best high gain players in the world use a form that offers no picking hand muting at all. This bend in the wrist is wrist flexion. And it's responsible for the signature appearance of Marty Friedman's technique, one of the most immediately recognizable in all of guitar. But it's not just Marty. Despite the lack of muting contact, there's little discernible noise when Eddie Van Halen fires up his famous tremolo technique. Or when the amazing Michelangelo Badio, another flexed player, unleashes his trademark precision scalar assault. I actually asked Mike about this years ago. With respect to muting was, um, you know, you don't mute at all when you're doing the alternate picking. What keeps the other strings from ringing? It's a good question. You don't hear any strings, you know, because it's not so saturated. Because uh -huh. I don't use the massive overdrive, I back it off. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's backing it up. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, but what I think it, it, part of it is the gain. Mike may not have been cranking the gain in that interview, but here he is playing my amp loud with the gain maxed. And there's really no interference from massive bass string ringing. How is he doing this? The flexed form, ever so capable and ever so accidental in my case. It's a thing that I fell into like so many things with guitar. That sort of happened over time and actually takes several forms in terms of our blended motion and our rotational motion. And I wasn't really aware of this until we started teaching and I had to look down and decipher what it was I was doing. By that time, I had already been using it um, in, in all sorts of different ways on a nylon string acoustic especially for jazzier things where you have a one-way economy style that mixes sweeping and alternate picking. Very similar to the Gypsy style. So when I do the Gypsy Master, Yosha Stefan uses. Flaction is uh, here. Yeah. If you have like a... And then uh, also ascending, the same thing, right? Doesn't feel easier or harder when you go the other way? Uh, same. That's the same for me. But I also use it for high gain guitar. And this presents a sort of a paradox because this technique appears to offer no muting capabilities. And the reason I say paradox is because muting capability is not the same thing as noise control capability. There is noise control happening when I do things like this. It's just not coming from the place you think it is. It's coming from... Your amp. If you set your amp to a high gain setting and make a, start out by making a fair amount of noise and then you play a loud note and we'll do that on the upper string so that we don't touch any of the lower ones and they can keep doing their noise. If you make the noise, then play a loud note, amazingly the noise disappears. It's still there, of course, didn't really go away. And the reason this works is because the amp is operating like a giant compressor. You're slamming the signal through several tube gain stages, and each one is rounding over that signal and effectively shoving it down. So your loud note comes in, but the tube can only handle here, and the whole signal gets shoved down. Which means that if your loud note was here and your noise was here, then after the compression, your loud note is down here and your noise is way down here and you can't really hear it anymore. Now, of course, the, the amount of noise that I'm using here for this little test is more than the amount of noise that I would typically start with for playing.
that's a lot more noise than you would normally encounter unless you accidentally whack a wrong string. So if we're starting out with the more typical amount of noise, it would be something like maybe that. And keep in mind, I'm in the high gain channel and that gain knob is all the way up, which is pretty much the only place I ever leave it. And this is all you get. That's the amount of noise that comes through the amp when I'm not playing. It'll feed back if you leave it, but there's not a huge amount of just random vibrating string, even if... Now there we got some liftoff noise, but again, was that happening when I was playing? No, I think that only happened when I stopped playing. Yeah, of course, when the phrase is over, what are you gonna be doing? You're gonna be reaching for your volume control. So if I'm just playing a line, I'm quiet now. So you didn't hear the noise when I was playing. And of course, when the phrase is over, I clamp that down pretty quickly, as probably a lot of us have learned to be quite speedy with the volume control, those of us of the gainy persuasion. Um, but it's not always the volume control either. If you pause in the middle of a line, there's a moment um, uh, in one of the phrases that we recorded for these lessons where I actually do that. Cracking the Code viewers, you are watching an awesome new chapter from the Pixelanting Primer's Forearm Motion section, which we've just updated with over one hour and 40 minutes of super in-depth, hands-on tutorials for getting this thing happening in your playing. This is, of course, the forearm joint, which you'll recognize right away as the source of Eddie Van Halen's legendary tremolo technique. But it's also used more commonly and stealthily in combination with wrist motion by metal masters like Temu Mentusati for doing anchored, muted, high gain riffing. So when I do a blend of forearm and wrist motion is also how gypsy picking works. And in the new lessons, we take a look at the effortless motion of the amazing Yosho Stefan to understand how to get gypsy picking motion happening in your playing. This includes getting the flexed form, which is this bend in the wrist here, happening for high gain playing, which you would think would be a drawback, but paradoxically is a super powerful weapon that I use all the time. The lack of right hand muting contact leads to some other surprising adaptations for noise control, which is precisely the subject of the lesson that we've got here. And that's the point. These new lessons are not just about how to get the core motions happening but how to get all the other core stuff happening alongside those that you need for practical purposes to make real world playing possible. And that includes pick grip, anchoring, um, forearm position, muting, tracking, which is how you move across the strings, sweeping, and a whole lot more. Well, how do you watch all of this awesome stuff? Well, it's so easy. You just head on over to troygrady.com and you sign up for a membership and you will immediately have access to not only the hours of material that we have in the primer currently, but the dozens of interviews we've done and every other lesson we've ever made. You can also pick up a download copy of the Pixelanting Primer, which you still get lifetime free updates every time we release new material like this. And while I have you, I would also point out that when we are working on new lessons, we tend to post very frequently to Instagram. And this very often includes behind the scenes clips, free tablature, and all sorts of other cool stuff. So if you're not following us on Instagram, by all means head over there and find us at Cracking the Code Guitar. So that's it. Check out the Pix Landing Primer if you're looking for more detail on how to get these motions working. Follow us on Instagram for free stuff and more updates. And as always, thanks so much for watching Cracking the Code. And now, back to the lesson. And right when I hit that note, the index finger jumps up ever so slightly, and then the line continues. <laughs> it's hard to stop in the middle, but right there at that note, the index finger jumps and bars the entire set of strings. So I did it right there. Downstroke on the A and then just the ever so slightest touch with the index finger, 
across all six strings to just kill any remaining noise. Just like that. And that was a thing that I, I did subconsciously without really thinking about it. But I think over time we learn all these little other methods for noise control that, um, that you don't really perhaps develop consciously, but that you start doing because you spend your life in front of a really noisy amp. So strategic barring with the left hand is another thing or another technique that I throw in to control noise in these kinds of phrases when I'm using this picking style and probably when I'm using lots of picking styles. And I'll especially do it when I'm fretting a note with one of the other three fingers, like the, say the pinky. So I find myself in this sort of posture very frequently where I've got a fretted note with one of the other fingers and the index is just sort of gently laying across all the strings. And I can do this and only the fretted note will make sound. And this works with the ring finger too. Very common. Again, I'm fretting a note on the D string here and the index finger is really just laying over all the other strings. And that works for any time you've got a sustained note that's typically at the end of a phrase or in between phrases where you want that one to ring and you really don't want any of that noise floor creeping up behind you as this note dies away. Because remember, the, comp the amp compressor effect is level dependent. So the softer this note gets, the, the closer the difference between the noise floor and the fretted note becomes, and you'll start to hear that noise floor creeping up or the noise floor creeping up at, as this note dies away. So in a case like that, I might want to throw in some left hand barring. And now it's just dead silent. Middle finger there also, and in index finger diagonal across all the strings. I remember seeing an, an article in a magazine at some point, probably in the 80s or 90s, where Nuno Betancourt was talking about doing this, and he had like, you know, funky things that he'd do on the upper strings with the pinky, and the index finger laying across all the other strings just to give that the percussive attack, but also to shut them off so they're not making noise. So left hand muting is a thing that you can incorporate. There's another version of this that Frank and Bali talked about a long time ago, and it was this idea. Left hand fretting muting, where the fretting finger makes contact with the next lower string on the guitar and shuts off the noise. Not completely, because you still get harmonic activation, especially when the gain is high, but what it stops is this, lift off noise. So if I'm playing an ascending phrase, I'm much more likely to get open strings ringing as I lift off the lower string and move to the next upper string because um, there's, there's no finger left down there to mute that one and not, the right hand, of course, is, is not doing anything. So one thing you can do is make sure that you retain contact against that next lower string with the fretting fingers on the next higher string. That phrase was sort of similar to one that I played during the intro. And it's basically in the D minor box position up here. And so I'm playing a couple notes on the low string. And then I'm playing these two notes on the A string. Which is basically your D minor triad. But when I do that, I can absolutely feel the index finger pressing against the low E string. And I can see it too, because the action here is pretty high. And um, I'll give you a shot of this so that you can actually see how much contact is actually being made here. pretty quiet, especially considering that I'm lifting off and moving to the next higher strings. Each time I move to that next higher string, I'm sort of pressing upward and feeling that the fingertips backstopping against the one that I just jumped off of. Now it's not killing all the noise. If I stop playing when I'm doing that, you'll still hear those lower strings going.
So there's still a lot of stuff there, but again, the compressor effect is shoving that all down so I don't hear it. And of course, at the top string, I'm throwing in my bar again. I got my ring finger fretting this note and the index finger laying across everything because this note here is going to die out sustain wise and that noise floor is going to come back up. It's amazing how quiet you can really get it. The fingertip muting or the gambali style left hand muting technique is not going to kill all the noise but what it's going to do is going to stop this. The big bass thunder that comes in when you lift off and it's basically almost like doing left hand pizzicato. So these things, after a while, the combination of um, the left-hand barring technique, the clean, obviously accurate playing in com combination with the compressor effect, and the Gambale style left-hand muting really makes a lot of things possible that you'd be amazed, especially when you film this and you see how little contact there is from the right hand uh, as I'm doing this. It, it's, we put a few of these clips on Instagram and, and people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, where's the muting? dude, where's my muting? And there really isn't any, or there isn't any coming from the traditional over here. Which is still cool for artistic effect, but it's not always necessary for noise control. And of course, Marty Friedman, who we interviewed, plays this way and has for a million years. And in Marty's technique, you can definitely on occasion sometimes hear noise. But there are other phrases then where there's absolutely none of it. And Marty employs another type of bar effect or clamping down effect that he does with the right hand. And this occasional strategic clamping with the right hand is what allows him to do that really cool finger picking effect with his right hand as well. And he gets these weepy, sustaining notes that have a little bit of harmonic in there from the fingernail. And it sounds really awesome. So for Marty, the muting effect is also a creative effect as well. So a lot of potential strategies here. But the bottom line, or the takeaway, is that when you're working on these techniques, if you find that the motions work for you and they're comfortable, then by all means, go forth and flex. And do not fear the string noise nor the condemnation of your friends who think your technique looks weird.